Okay, so I'm Juana Popes Pisando. I teach in the English department. And um, when I designed this class, I've never taught online before, but when I designed this class, uh, I was thinking, what are my design principles? And this morning, a friend of mine posted something on Facebook about her elementary age son. He's in first grade, and he had to write a reflection to the teacher following some questionable behavior. And he justified that behavior saying, well, every day is the same, so I just wanted to kick it up a notch. <laughs> so that was my thing. I wanted every day to kind of be the same, every week to be the same, to be predictable, but here and there to kick it up a notch. And uh, I have um, a Start Here page with um, information about the course, and here is the message from me, and I don't know why the video decided to have that. Mm -hmm. Uh, shot of looks like I'm trying to strangle myself, so I have to see if there's a way to switch to a different moment in the uh, in the video. And then uh, the basic information about the class, starting with the online student readiness assessment. I want students to do that first of all, even before they go to the course information, and then to the discussion board where they introduce themselves in a similar way to what um, Molly did. Then in the content area, I um, built it week by week and uh, in a way it's week by week but also kind of uh, by assignment as well so following the the sequence of assignments whatever they're writing that week an analysis an argument a profile or uh, everything else so that's the uh, the predictable part and then inside this week each week we have all the different uh, tasks so for example in the first week uh, the kick it up a notch part is working students working on uh, wikis and part of it it's a writing class so uh, I want students to be able to uh, experiment different ways of writing to try out different methods to come up with ideas so that's where I switch things around from week to week and if we go to uh, week two here is one of my favorite assignments. When Johan showed me this Padlet, I was like, I have to do something with, uh, with the Padlet. So as a way to practice as a group, I created a Padlet and there's an image in the center, uh, an image from the shield that I want students to collaboratively analyze. So in, in my mind, each of them are going to write these comments like I did here about the image and the image can become bigger so you can see. I'm asking them to choose the issue of the shield from the day of the birth and basically analyze it, uh, do the rhetorical analysis of it. So um, then the, the weeks go um, one after the other fo focusing on different uh, assignments and at the end uh, there's one discussion board for each assignment that's just the questions about the assignment discussion board. And I have created separate tabs for discussions and reflections so students can ask us those without going inside of the weeks. So for there's several discussions, but for each assignment, uh, there's a board like this, any questions about this analysis paper, because I don't want them to send me emails with questions, I want them to post the questions there for students, first of all, to answer if they have an answer, and then for the answer to be available to everybody. And then uh, there's another special section for reflections after each uh, paper they write, they have to write um, a reflection. So uh, then library resources and course resources are things that uh, they can use no matter what uh, module or week we're in. So these, uh, this is why they're separate from the week by week. Now what have I learned? Uh, I've learned a lot, first of all, to make the pedagogy visible. And I always think that students understand why they have to do certain assignments. It's all very clear in my head but oftentimes probably I did not explain exactly why the particular assignment fulfills the outcomes or the learning outcomes of the course. So I think this has forced me to make that pedagogy visible and to actually think about the connections. I always assume there's connections between what I'm asking them to do and what I want them to learn. 
but going through the process, especially at the beginning of the course, uh, made that visible and a lot more clear. And like Molly, I always thought that my Blackboard sites were pretty good until I went to this and I realized they were horrendous. So even this semester when I taught my face-to-face uh, -face classes, my, my Blackboard sites were completely different than, than that. So I think it was a great, great learning experience uh, for both types of uh, classes, both face-to-face -face and, um, and online. And probably 90% of the class was done really quickly and the rest I spent like huge amount of time decided to do the videos because I have a lot of trouble listening to myself. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So that was the big uh, procrastination element for me doing the videos and I have just two or three. so. I'm glad this is not a lecture class. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Any questions? Um, yes. So are those, like, are the icons on your reflections, are they? Yeah, and I, I looked at them and I have no idea why they're different. Probably there's something I did differently. What's like the, the course link? This is a course link, but I don't know what this is. It's just a journal. Yeah. Yeah, so oh. maybe I did the step differently from those ones. So that's something I have to go back and and fix. And there should be probably another one here. There's one missing. I realized that as I was looking at it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, I did this in the summer. So I'm like a student with an incomplete. I had to travel when people were doing the showcase. And I realized that without constantly paying attention to the course, I forgot a lot of the how-tos. So I think having a really good set of notes helps because sometimes I could go back to my notes and say, here's how you do a course link or something like that.